As a chairman of a political action committee, my message is uh, mostly political. The 2003 invasion of Iraq proved to be disaster to that country's indigenous Christian Assyrian population. Assyrians were among the, the early converts to Christianity and the church they established in Mesopotamia or present day Iraq is credited with spreading the word of the gospel and evangelizing hundreds of thousands of people belonging to many tribes, nations that inhabited the regions of the Middle East, Central Asia, China, and the rest of the Far East. So when Marco Polo arrived, he was amazed to see, he said, oh, there are Christians already here. According to the last census, or when he arrived in China, that is, According to the last census that Saddam's regime held in 1997, the Assyrian population, also known as Chaldean and Syriac, was listed to be 1.5 million. Today's estimates are that more than 700,000 have already left the country and they are already living in the US, Europe, Canada, and Australia. A big percentage of them are refugees in the neighboring countries of Jordan and Syria, waiting patiently to receive their immigrant visas to join their brethren already settled in the West. Initially, when the invasion happened, the two main ethnic or religious groups that benefited from the US invasion of Iraq in 2003 were the Kurds and the Shiite Arabs. The Kurds became the main power brokers in the new Iraq because they have been the trusted allies of the West since the toppling of the monarchy in 1958 by communists and the launching of the Kurdish insurgency in 1959 in the northern part of the country. After the invasion of Iraq in 2003 and with the help of the US, the Kurds were able to establish a semi-autonomous region in three provinces and are demanding that they annex oil-rich Kirkuk and vast areas of two other provinces, or as their leadership has openly stated on many occasions, they would secede and take the lands they are claiming with them by force. Historical Assyrian lands are in the northern part of the country, most of which are now under the control of the Kurdistan regional government. What is left of the Assyrian lands is part of the Nineveh province and is referred to as the Plain of Nineveh. Since the U.S. invasion, over 66 Assyrian churches throughout the country and belonging to different Christian denominations have been attacked by terrorists and thousands of Christian civilians have been killed without the federal government of Iraq in Baghdad or the Kurdish regional government in the north lifting a finger to find out who the perpetrators are. It is the moral responsibility of the U.S. government to protect the indigenous ethnic population of Iraq because it is a consequence of its military adventure there that the recent attacks of violence against Christian Assyrians by ultra-nationalists, sectarian militias, and political opportunists are being committed under the disguise of Islamic terrorism. The U.S. committed billions of dollars in aid and thousands of military personnel to save the Bosnian Muslims from the Christian Serbs, only to go back again to the same region a few years later to commit additional billions and thousands of troops, this time to help Muslim Albanians carve out a new region for, them, for themselves out of Kosovo. Assyrian Americans are asking the U.S. administration and the rest of the civilized world that they apply the same principles of justice and human rights that they use in Europe to save the European Muslims to help protect the Christian Assyrians from genocide and complete destruction. Nothing special. We don't want any special help. Just whatever you apply to the U.S. administration in the West, whatever you apply to help European Muslims, apply the same standard to us. We're humans too. The Iraqi constitution that the U.S. helped write grants the, the Iraqi constitution that the U.S. helped write grants the Assyrian Christians and other minorities the right to establish a new province in the plain of Nineveh with ties to the federal government in Baghdad. And I stress here, with ties 
to the federal government in Baghdad. We do not want ties to the regional government. We do not need guardianship. We're adult enough. We don't need Kurdish regional government to guide us, um, guard us. The new province will be the only area in post-Saddam, Iraq, that has different ethnic and religious groups living side by side in peace and harmony. We don't want a province for Christians only. We want to live in peace and true partnership with the different ethnic and religious components, such as Arabs, Yazidis, Turkmen, Shabaks, and others. Article 125 of the Iraqi Constitution will allow the different ethnic groups living within the pro this province to administer their own affairs, preserve their language, and practice their religion freely. We will show the rest of Iraq and the world that Christians and Muslims, Arabs and Assyrians and others can live in peace, together in peace and harmony once again. To the Iraqi politicians that are against the creation of the 19th province because they claim it will be created along ethnic and sectarian lines, hence it will be unacceptable because it would be unconstitutional. These people are now defending the constitution that they completely ignore other times. I want to remind them that they received their government, that they were elected based on ethnic and sectarian votes. All of them were elected based on ethnic and sectarian votes. I want to remind them that they received their government positions and other privileges because of the sect they belong to or their ethnicity. I want to remind them that the areas they live in outside the green zone are divided along ethnic and sectarian lines. I want to remind these politicians that almost all of them, all of them belong to religious and ethnic political parties. I also want to point out to the same politicians that if a province or region cannot be formed on religious or ethnic basis, then the existence of the Kurdistan region is also unconstitutional. This is the only option left for the Assyrians to create the 19th province. This is the only option left for the Assyrians to continue living on their ancestral lands. Otherwise, the only other choice they would have would be to pack up and head for the West. Unfortunately, the Assyrian identity, culture, and the Aramaic language, the language spoken by Jesus Christ, would disappear in a matter of two or three generations at the most. The US, Europe, and the rest of the colonial powers of centuries past once again, will be morally responsible for the destruction of another indigenous nation. Thank you.